and I'm honored to be part of such a group of specialists. I have so little background in healthcare. My, well, my background is, is in technology and in particular data privacy, GDPR, as a lot of people mentioned. And uh, I'm here with the perspective of the users of the NHS. So the NHS users uh, need to have more clarity on how to navigate and we all need uh, to have better answers from, from the system. So uh, oh, we have the, the presentation. So, uh, the, so the conference aims to, to stress how critical data is to improve and, uh, and to improve the results in health. From, from the streams, the, the four streams uh, created, we can find some common background. So, and the, um, the, common, uh, the, the common ground, sorry. And the, the, the customer data is some, some of that, that. From the previous uh, speakers, uh, we, 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 we heard about that so much. So the more, uh, the more and better data, the more uh, and, uh, improvement on the results we get. So our stream, uh, our stream, stream A, focus in having data to direct the attention to each patient as unique. Um, so then the next slide, please. Can you imagine uh, a bank uh, without uh, the customer at the center, the customer at the heart? It's impossible to think to these days that that could, have, could be happen. Uh, a bank would not survive. And if you look at the, at the media industry or the telecom industry or any other industry besides this one, uh, the, the, the health uh, care industry, uh, not knowing their customers, not knowing who is watching the, the, the videos, who is using their mobile phones, uh, whatever, the, 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 who is buying their products and how they are using their products. It's impossible to think about that. Think about the government. Let's go to the government. And if, you, if we go to the government, can you imagine a government not having a consolidation of the taxpayer in a single view? Those countries that still do not have that have face really, really uh, uh, good, uh, uh, strong problems. So we need to have in, in, in Europe, at least we have that. So now, does it happen in healthcare systems? Um, and if we talk about private groups, probably, most probably yes. We, we find uh, that they, they already focus in a patient as the, the, the client and centralize it. But the national public health care, unfortunately not. And I'm not uh, really talking about any country in particular. I'm not talking about Portugal or any other country. I'm talking in general. We all would like uh, to have it, but we don't. We struggle to get there. So consolidation and integration of, of information is very hard to do because we still have legacy systems and we struggle to remove them or to use them. Some countries are now, and um, um, Ashrid mentioned it, are now federating data, uh, data sets and using artificial intelligence and HS, HL7 standard uh, and others uh, to, and, and the metadata to, to support it. Can you imagine uh, legacy systems and metadata working together? I'm, I'm really uh, um, worried about that. Are you sure that mixing AI with, with, with legacy, please, uh, can, you, can, you, can you move now? Meeting legacy with AI mixing together, mixed together is really, really uh, um, uh, confusing. So the questions we are raising here uh, in Portugal is, do we have the customer at the center in healthcare? Should we continue to maintain these legacies? Should we federate AI and HL7, uh, HL7 and, and the legacy systems? Why not starting from restructuring the, 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 the infrastructure, the, 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 the basis, center the data in the, the, in, the, in, the, in the patient and treat the patient as a customer, not as a patient, but as a citizen and as a customer. Please, uh, next slide, please. So we came up with this um, 
the, and, and when, I, when it says Portuguese society, it means a very large group of uh, um, societies, uh, patient societies and health societies in, in, uh, in, in Portugal. Uh, we're talking about a lot of people, um, not more, than, more than 100. So we are trying to build a new proposal for a national registry to answer to a customer-centric solution GDPR compliant from the basics, scientific research uh, to, to be able for, the, for the, the, the researcher to be able to do uh, scientific research and to, to analyze from different angles and to be a sustainable uh, solution. These were, were the first four, four questions that we studied uh, to, 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 to address to, to build this. And I will be very quickly with this, but it, it also, of, of course, it has a lot of information uh, behind. Paulo, please. Next slide. Yes. So country, uh, country uh, sorry, customer centric means the, the data belongs to the, to, the, to the user, not to the hospital, to the, to the health systems. So if the, the, the information belongs to the, to the user, we need to, to, to build the, the, the user infrastructure or the, the, the user system in the middle, and then all the services around, all the, 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 the clinical data and the social data around with blocks of information. And then after that, we, and, and at the same time, sorry, next slide, please. Uh, Paulo, we have to finish in one minute, huh? just to let you know. I'll, I'll finish in less than that. So uh, all the information must be GDPR, uh, GDPR compliant. So we need to have the patient to consent or the, the proper rights for, for the user to, to address. Sign Next slide, please. This dividing in two different blocks of information, one which we call the daily, daily basis for the, for the, for the users and, and the, 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 the um, professionals to use it. And on the other side, we have a massive knowledge data lake that will be able to, uh, to, to give the scientific, uh, scientific research uh, to the, the, the ground to, uh, to, to work. And then the next slide, please. And of course, we need to, to look at the standard, standard sustainability. For one side, the, the per transaction or the daily basis, and the other one for contract-based uh, when we, 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 we are talking about the, the, the scientific. Next slide, please, and thank you all. So we, to have the tailored therapies and patient adherence, we need good data. To have uh, good data, we need to rebuild, not mixing and adding complexity. With good data, we will have the grounds to add real-world data and real-world evidence, like Lars was, uh, was, was, was saying, at the, and add the best technology, including AI and HL7 and, and so on, and anonymize and safely research. Next slide. Thank you. Okay, I, I think Federico, you have also something to present uh, in the in the stream, or can, are you ready to go to the breakout to host the discussions? I think we can go to the breakout. I think I would like to give time for uh, for people to to discuss if we have time. Uh, I mean, I, my own presentation actually uh, links links with a lot of these topics, so uh, we can try to do it more informally during the during the breakout. You can you can remove my my. Uh, I also I also would like to thank you so much for this uh, interesting panel, and and um, let uh, just remind you that if you agree, all these presentations will be in the in the virtual space of the Alta Forum, so that people would be available. We also plan to do a little bit of follow up, uh, short video interviews with all of you and add this uh, uh, important uh, content that was shared here today to not be forgotten and to be uh, re constantly reminded until the live presential summit that we want to host uh, next uh, September. Uh, so I think uh, we are now going to do a split on the breakouts as we, you will be kindly invited, all of you, to go on to the breakout for the Q&A that Federico, I ask you, be so kind to moderate. Mm -hmm. So we are already sacrificing the break, the, um, the bio break that we are uh, supposed to have uh, in order to complete the schedule at 11.30 and starting the Innovation Village with uh, Dr. Ruivo from the Infarmed is going to uh, do a keynote on uh, 11.30. 
in the Portuguese time, uh, 12, uh, um, sorry, uh, 10, 10.30 Portuguese time, 11.30 uh, CEST. Um, so I think uh, that uh, without, uh, Frederick, you can still uh, round up any comments and final conclusions while we wait for the participants of the breakout to joining us. Federico? Sure, sure, absolutely. So I'm, I was very happy to uh, hear the three presentations. I, like I said, um, I, uh, my own presentation, we can just skip it, but I, can, I, can, I will uh, try to tie it back with some of the things that were said today. So basically, my, but the point I wanted to make today is that as a proponent of value-based healthcare, uh, I think uh, healthcare systems and the cycles in general are trying to achieve a couple of things. Uh, to improve the quality of care. And we heard uh, Astrid's uh, presentation on how we can actually use more targeted approaches to actually maximize the benefits and minimize the side effects of, of treatment of patients through precision medicine, uh, more efficient and sustainable care. Um, we, we also heard that can, uh, the technology that Lars was alluding to also allow, allow us to some extent to, to achieve that uh, level of efficiency. And I think more related to what um, Paulo was saying before, really also try to drive the research into the areas aligned with the patients of the, inter of the, of the, the interest of the patient. So I, I think it's, it's sort of paternalistic from, from the side of, of certain stakeholders to think that they know what the patient wants. Sometimes we don't ask the patient what they want. We don't then have a good indication of actually how, where we should actually do, in, do the, our investments for research for the sake of the patient. And so if these are things that we want to do and want to achieve, then I believe that uh, the, the data flow is actually uh, an important enabler to, to achieve that. And the problem is right now, um, there's a lot of hurdles from a technical standpoint that need to be overcome. And, and, and the summarizing comment that I would like to make is I think that COVID is actually going to turn our world uh, upside down and actually be a driver for digital innovation and progress on these fronts. Because while right now we have certain absence of systematic uh, measurement of um, uh, outcomes, we have uh, in some instances an inadequate investment of IT systems, lack of coordination, a lack of sharing of data for coordination of care and for research, and um, a relatively limited appetite for technology for the delivery of care. I think COVID is really pushing us to think how we can actually use technology to address all of that. So I, I, would, I would finish but just by saying that, um, and then we'll go into the questions that we've been receiving on the chat, just by saying that I truly believe that the, you know, there's a silver lining to what we're happening with, with the COVID-19 situation. It's, it's changing a lot of the ways that we are uh, working as humans, as citizens, um, and as researchers, but I think it will, uh, you know, push us to organically solve some of the problems with the data flow that will boost some of the initiatives that we've heard today. So that's my, my uh, overlying comment about the, the three presentations and my own perspective that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you, thank you so much, Federico. And I think it was really rich that we have here more than 1,000 Facebook viewers. And 